and a fine how do you do to you so i got this one it just came out special limited release imperial stout 2015 tart cherry stout 11 percent abv how about that uh <laughs> read a little bit from their label a special limited release ale imperial stat as a special treat for beer lovers a big complex stouts boulevard brewing company offers the 2015 imperial stout x series the x factor stands for the key ingredients added to each yeah they're all different um there was a cocoa nib one and this is a charter uh charter tart cherry <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you've had enough to drink, Top. Maybe I have. Fuck you. Anyways, yeah, you know, what the hell. Um, yeah, just, just a tad there. There we go. They had the Aztec Cocoa Nib out for a while. This one just came out. Uh, having the same labels is a little confusing, to be honest, because I always overlook this one. I wish they were more specific, but... Now they are macro owned, so these things are going to happen. Uh, you know, I hmm, is it a good thing? Well, uh, they have increased distribution. They are in more places than they used to be. I think some of their beers aren't quite the same, to be honest with you. Uh, I think some may be just as good, uh, and I think they're trying to expand other horizons. So it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, I think some of their stuff has lost some quality, in my opinion. I think, uh, but I also think that they're doing things they wouldn't have done had they not been bought out by Duval. So, you know, what are you going to do? The aroma is very nice, actually. You can smell those tart cherries on the nose. I smell a whole lot of coffee. I smell some chocolate, some big, deep, dark chocolate. But there is some definite tartness on the nose. Oh. Fruit beers are kind of a hit and a miss for me. I don't like raspberries and I'm not a fan of cherries. So, but I've been really trying to get myself way the hell out of my comfort zone this year, to be honest with you. I've been buying beers and beer styles that aren't necessarily things that I would typically like, but I've been. If I don't like them, I want to at least try to understand them. That's one reason I bought this one. Cherries aren't necessarily my thing. But I wanted to see if I could buy it, understand it. I, and I think I can, actually. It kind of works for me on some level. I'm not a huge fan of tart, but because you've got some big decadent things going on, because you've got... Uh, that big imperial stout. You've got those big malts going on, which is going to impart some notes of chocolate and coffee. Because things like that can get cloying, those tart cherries actually kind of act uh, typically like hops would, it, uh, hops would in, in a big hoppy beer, which kind of got to clamp it down and stop it from being cloying. So what I'm saying is you got that big sweetness right up front, but then on the back end, you've got that tartness to kind of shut it all down and kind of balance it all out. It does work. I do get it. Uh, again, cherries aren't my favorite flavor. <laughs> but I do understand it in this beer. How about that? Very nice indeed. Yeah. There are some advantages to being owned by a large conglomerate, I suppose. I, You know, I, there's, I have a few breweries in town that... Uh, really mean a lot to me for one reason or another. Piney River, Mothers, uh, White River. Uh, if they were to be bought out by one of the big guys, it would kind of break my heart. It really would. Uh, but it all, I'm starting to feel like it's almost inevitable at some point. It's not, it doesn't seem to be a matter of, uh, of uh, if it'll happen. It's kind of a matter of when, you know. It just feels like at some point, some big guy is going to buy up something. Because that's what, what's what they do, right? <laughs> they swallow things up. Piney River is the one that would really break my heart the most, I think, to be honest with you, if they would happen to be bought out by a big guy because I have some personal, yeah, I have a personal attachment to that brewery for a couple reasons I don't wish to talk about right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, it would break my heart uh, because, uh, you know, you want the people that started the brewery to, to remain in control and to keep doing things where they're doing And when that quits happening, you go, oh. Uh, Boulevard, I don't know, you know, I mean... 
I didn't have that same personal attachment to this brewery. Uh, but yeah, I hate to see the big guys. And, but if they had to be swallowed up, I guess I would rather it be Duvel than, you know, than the other evil empire. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I do feel like some of that other stuff maybe isn't quite the same. Or, um, but I do feel like maybe they have expanded. Uh, they they are doing some other things. I'm not sure if Funky Pumpkin would have happened under the old regime. So uh, I'm going to give them some credit that way. Or would have had the ability to. I mean. You know, when you're working with, you know, a certain amount of money, you have to do things a certain way. I think, and, and they certainly have more distribution than they've had before. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. you got to take the good with the bad. Uh, I do like this beer. I do like most of what Boulevard does. I'm not going to quit buying them. Uh, I bought the Funky Pumpkin. <laughs> I bought the Rye on Rye. I bought this one. I'm going to buy stuff. But I prefer to buy stuff locally owned when I can. So, hey, this is Tom to Beer Whisperer. I'll talk to you later.